Right, it is time to start cutting some gears. I can't put this off any longer. Um, in fact, if I'm perfectly honest, it's time to uh, to retry cutting some gears. This is a new gear blank that I've just finished cutting um, because I fucked up. I miscalculated the size of the cutter that I required to gash these uh, to gash these gear blanks. Here's my original gear blank, uh, which is gashed with a two millimeter a two millimeter cutter. That two millimeter cutter turns out it's too wide. I actually need a one millimeter. So step the first is to gash this 60 times um, at uh, 2.74 millimeters deep with a, a one millimeter cutter. So I'm going to get on with that. Maybe we'll have some music. There we go, so we're about halfway through. Basically why I'm slitting this is that I don't have the correct gear cutter and the, uh, the local scrapyard are shut so I'm not going to be able to go and find one either. Um, so what we're going to do is we're slitting this with a, with a 1mm carbide, uh, carbide slitting saw and then the rest is going to be done with a fly cutter um, unless I can find somebody to lend, lend me the correct cutter. Um, this is uh, it's less than op it's less than optional but, uh, but that's where we're at. So that's all, uh, that's all grooved and we have a uh, hand ground uh, hand, hand ground fly cutter bit set up and we're now cutting the actual gear teeth which you can see in there um, these will not give a complete uh, hang on, focus uh, these will not give the correct uh, the correct gear, gear tooth form straight away um, what you find is that at this end we're more or less the right size. This end we're too fat and we need a wider, we need a wider, uh, wider groove. So we need to uh, we need to work on that afterwards, post processing basically. Um, this way of cutting bevel gears involves at least three passes, and there's four in this case because I've had to put a put a grooving a grooving step in to take some of the load off the fly cutter. Um, so there will be one pass round to rough out the to rough out the grooves and then there'll be clean up steps on either side and we'll get into that in a bit so anyway i'm going to get on with this fly cutting is not very exciting i'm not even going to bother filming that come on focus your fuck right so there we go 60 teeth cut now you'll notice that these uh these are too wide they won't mesh with a, with a similar gear so what we need to do is to move on to the next step um, what the next step involves doing is offsetting this way by a certain amount and then winding the gear back very slightly like so so that the uh, so that the cutter which is just here meets up with the small end and then we make 60 cuts and that will cut one side of the tooth and it'll cut such that uh, come on focus it will cut such that the this side of the this end of the, the tooth is the right size near enough and then we do exactly the same thing in the other direction um, so we remove it back this way and we revolve that way um, by the same amount off the center line and uh, and Robert is your mother's brother, as they say. And then what we're going to do is cut the 61 tooth gear, which is the same, the same deal. Um, and uh, then I'm going to make up a jig to run them together, and I'm actually going to run them together with a bit of abrasive, and just let them let them run against one another for a while, and uh, and smooth themselves out. So let's uh, let's get on with setting that up. Right, 
so we're set up here we're still in place what we're going to do is we're now going to move the gear blank by 12 hundredths of a millimetre towards me I'm moving it away bugger well never mind move it away from me by 12 hundredths of a millimetre and if we try and move into the cutter we find that we hit I can't actually move so what I need to do is to rotate the gear this way very slightly so round in this direction very slightly to get it lined up with the cutter so I'm going to try one hole and see what happens and one hole we go in so that's all well and good I can now because I cut this a little bit short I can come up very very slightly I'm still, still not touching should now be at full depth. So lock off the, the z-axis again and get ready to cut. Now because I've already cut all of these um, I can't really tell which one's which so I'm going to have to mark one of the gears, uh, one of the teeth. So I'm going to mark the first tooth that I'm going to cut. That one there. That way I know when I've gone all the way around. to do the other side now which means coming back the other way with the uh, with the table re-rotating re with, the, with the, the head and um, Bob, Bob's uncle and then what we've got to do is the 61 tooth gear and the 61 tooth gear promises to be a little bit more amusing um, we come down to the limitations of my divider which is as I've previously mentioned minimum viable now uh, with a dividing head normally you have a bunch of discs and what happens is you've got a, a ratio between the worm and the, the big the big worm wheel on the back here so typically it'll be a 60 to 1 a 60 to 1 ratio so one turn of the handle gives you 1 60th of a turn here which means that with no discs at all if you've got a way of blocking your handle in a in a fixed position you can get any factor of 60 out of your 60 to 1 dividing head um, factors of 60 there's quite a few of them then if you want to uh, if you want to get different numbers you choose a disc which has a ring here and uh, you you do a certain number of turns a certain number of holes based on the uh, based on the calculated calculated factors for your dividing head now, typically the discs are set up so that you can get from 0 to 60 divisions or thereabouts without, and you, you can get all of those divisions exactly. Now, I'm minimal, minimum viable. For starters, I've got a 55 to 1 ratio on the, uh, on the worm wheel, which is a long way from being optimal, but it's the only thing that I can get into the space available. Um, and I've only got three rings because those are the those are the rings that were easily div divided on the head of the short blade. Now to get 61, I can't get it exactly. 61 is a prime number, um, if I'm not mistaken. I believe it is. 
um, it's difficult to find something that's got uh, that's got factors with 61 and 55. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, approximate division. We can get very, very close. Uh, this is a 30, a 30 hole ring here. Um, so with a 30 hole ring, um, each division is 130 times 55, which is uh, 550, 15, 16, 16, 1 1650th of a degree of a, of a rotation. Or thereabouts, I think it's 1650. Um, so, using that, you can probably get quite close. And in fact, you can get quite close. You can get such that um, if you use the right number of divisions on here, um, the the difference once you've finished your dividing is less than one hundredth of a millimeter off. So it's not exact, but it's pretty fucking close. Um, but to get that level of accuracy, um, I need to do 29 holes on the 30 on the 30 dividing ring and 36 turns. There's an awful lot of cranking involved. I've checked it because uh, the maths comes from a piece of software that I wrote to, to generate tables. Um, I've checked it. It is correct, but it takes an hour just to do the cranking because you know, you've got about a minute of cranking between each division. So I'm not going to bother filming that. Um, and actually in passing, if anybody's got a dividing head and only has a certain number of discs, um, wants to know what the divisions are available with those discs, drop me a line. I can, uh, I can, bung, up a, I can bung out a set of division tables for you and no problems whatsoever. Um, I'll give it to you in PDF form perfectly free of charge so anyway I'm going to get on with uh, get on with finishing the uh, finishing that gear and then uh, well, I'll probably put this up now and the next video hopefully we'll have both gears ready to go and ready to mesh <laughs>